everyone, so this video I'm going to be trying out new watercolors and these are professional grade watercolors. They're called Schmincke Horadam watercolors. I've been resisting opening this. I got them from Jackson's Art Supplies. They've been on a really big discount and I've been wanting to try them for so long. I just got little five milliliter tubes and I'm so excited to try these. So I got Burnt Sienna, Dark Blue, a Phthalo Blue, Ultramarine, and I got Quinacidro Magenta. I just wanted a pink, a permanent red, a transparent yellow, and Phthalo Green. Oh, 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 and Schmincke Violet. So this was 50 Canadian dollars with shipping, so that's a really, really good deal for these paints and for this many different colors. I tried to get just the basic colors I use all the time, and I also introduced Thalo Blue because I've been wanting to try it. Um, and yeah, these are mostly the ones I use. And this looks like a very orangey red, but I'll see if I can get it to work. And I know I'm going to be using these, so I bought another palette. The palette I usually use is, well, it's the same palette, but it has the, uh, the Shinhan watercolors in it, and I love them. They're really good price for what they do. They look like this. And I would highly recommend them because you get so much for the price. It's like 15 mils for $10 a tube. Um, that seems like a lot of money, but it lasts a long time. And you don't need all these colors. You basically just need your basics. Um, I really like this brand. I guess those are also technically professional watercolors, but um, I'm, I'm interested to see how these work because they're a lot more pricey and I've seen people recommend them all over the place. I actually found out about the sale uh, because of Dina. So thank you for that. So I'm gonna put them in the palette now. I'm gonna try to organize them how I normally have them organized. Oh, that one's overflowing. No. I'm just gonna start off with a little bit. I don't want to put too much in the pan. The lid is full of paint. I don't know. I usually really fill the wells, but I'm not gonna do that right now. It feels a little too extreme. That one's a bit thicker. Yellow. Oh, wow. Is that what that's supposed to look like? Interesting. I've never seen a yellow come out of the tube like that. That's so weird. Is transparent yellow different than just yellow? Hmm. This yellow is so vibrant. It looks kind of brownish on the palette, but once you put it on the paper, it's this brilliant bright yellow. It's so nice. I'm gonna start swatching the colors down this column. So here's the red. It's kind of hard to use watercolors when they're um, wet on the pan because I end up taking too much color. So far the sienna color is not as... Oh no, that's still it's a nice color. Now the yellow, obviously, but we already know what the yellow looks like. It's so bright, you hardly need any um, pigment to make that bright yellow. I wonder how light fast it is. This thalo green. Super bright. Very nice. I believe this is thalo blue. Or maybe this is thalo blue. I think this is thalo blue. It looks more like it. It's got that kind of turquoisey quality. Yeah, I think this was ultramarine and this is thalo blue. Look how bright these colors are. Now for dark blue. Which I always like to have because it's a nice sort of muted blue color. You can definitely tell some of the colors granulate, but I don't have really have a problem with that. This is going to be um, interesting to get used to a different way of mixing colors. Because I'm so used to the other paints I've been using for probably a year. I don't know when I got them, but I'm so used to those and these are going to be a very interesting change. Just see how they blend together. Oh wow, look at that. They spread so far. I remember have, uh, my higher quality paints would do that. They just spread more. Okay, I'm really, really excited to just actually get started painting with them because I don't really want to swatch anymore. I'll see how this puddle dries. It might have a little bit too much in it. There we go. So I'm going to set this to the side and see what they look like. But they definitely leave a harsher edge around the outside. So, 
I've prepared two sketches. One of them looks like this and one of them looks like this. They're the same character. Um, I want to do something kind of related to Junicorn because it's Junicorn right now which is basically when you draw unicorn characters during the month of June. Art challenges are really great to get inspired and stuff, so I'm going to be painting this. And I want to put some tape on it. I'm gonna start by wetting the page, which is what I normally do. But I'm wondering if this is gonna get out of hand really quickly with how much they spread in water. So I might not always wanna do this anymore, it depends. I don't know how this is gonna go exactly. Okay. Here we go. I don't know what color I want this to be. I'll drink my tea while I decide. Maybe something pink and blue, something very magical looking because I don't do that a lot and I want to because I can. So let's say I should have my water over here so I don't drip on everything. So is this, I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Okay, that's kind of, that's an okay color. Let's, let's use that. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Oh yeah, that spreads so much more than I'm used to. Also, this is a fresh palette, so the water beads so nicely. I don't really know what this creature is. I didn't. I remember I didn't even talk about what it is. It's just kind of a cute little unicorn creature, I guess. Not a horse, just something else. Yeah, I might not want to wet the paper like this. Maybe I would just wet the thing I'm actually painting it spreads but that's okay i don't really oh you can actually lift it up pretty nicely that's good to know so if i didn't want this i could just i'm picturing the horns will probably be pretty dark oh, the colors are so bright Need to find a good way to tone them down more. So I probably will not be wetting the whole page like I normally do because this definitely spreads out a lot more than I'm used to. And I've noticed the colors on the palette look different than how you put them on the page, like even more different than the other watercolors I use because they're so um, concentrated, I guess. Like once you mix them, of course these look different, but once you actually mix the colors, they look a bit different. I kind of wanted the tail to be white, so let's see if I can lift the color. I can. So the colors definitely bleed into each other a lot more than I'm used to. They do it in more of a splotchy way than my other watercolors, which is probably a good thing. But I'm thinking I want to do some purpley shadows perhaps i like mixing purple with some um, sienna colors to get shadows for for things okay yeah this is the color okay so i'm gonna make this leg Here's a much darker color for the horns. Man, the longer I talk, the harder I find it to talk. I have a bit of a cold and my throat is not liking me talking. I don't know why I'm not feeling very loose with these watercolors. Probably because I'm a bit intimidated. And because there's just these subtle little things that make them feel a bit different. They dry nice and flat when you lay down the color evenly. They have a nice way they look when you do that. I'm not used to how darkly it outlines each area of color, um, but it's just something I have to get used to. I think I need some more- oh man, I hope I didn't put my brush back in my tea. I just have this feeling that I did and I didn't notice and I'm gonna be drinking chemicals, but I did buy- I didn't buy any ones with like cadmium in it, um, because I know that's a harmful chemical. But I don't know about the other pigments I have because <laughs> I could have got some that are harmful and I just don't know. The purple is basically black on the palette. It's hard to tell 
Um, I keep thinking it's black, but it's not. So I'm used to having black at the end of my palette. I never really use the black, but if I want grayscale stuff, I'll use it. It might be nice to do a little blue areas. I don't know. Just make, maybe he has a bluer stomach. Maybe the underside of the tail is also blue. I think that would be nice. You can tell I'm a little bit, I'm still a little bit clumsy with them because they do work differently. But overall, I'm really happy I got these and I can't wait to do more illustrations with them. I might make his feet blend from a pinkish brown. His feet, I don't really know what the gender is actually, but I see it as a he. Too much water. Don't want there to be harsh edges. I love mixing the phthalo blue with the violet. It makes such a nice, um, cool blue shadow. Kind of a warm blue, actually. I don't really know. I feel like I could have controlled the colors better, but this makes me want to do an all watercolor piece where I only use watercolor and nothing else. So I just lost most of the recording for this, um, but you saw kind of my initial reactions, I guess. So I'm gonna do the other one. I was gonna do it anyway, but now even more that I've lost the footage for this. But I just love how dark you can get the colors. I'm really, really, really happy with these watercolors so far. The colors are super vibrant and they've just been a joy so far. So I'm really, really glad I got them. And now I'm gonna do this one. And I think I'm gonna make him have a different color scheme because uh, just for the sake of trying more colors. So yeah, he's gonna go from yellow to brown to green, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I won't wet my whole paper first this time because that was stressful. Don't wanna deal with that again. So I think the yellow, I want to add a tiny bit of red to it so it's a warmer yellow because it's kind of a more lemony cool yellow and I want it to be more of an orangey yellow. Let's do this. Oh, that's so bright, oh no. <laughs> I think that's too bright. Now I just need the brown. Oh my gosh, that wasn't mixed properly. I think the brown will take up most of it. This is more of an orange than a brown though, let's be honest. And then it fades to green. I love these neutral sap green sort of colors. They're really nice. They're some of my favorite colors lately. If you've been watching my videos, you probably can tell because I tend to just gravitate towards this this green I must use in everything. And yellow and orange. I love these colors. So it's nice to use them together. Should I make his feet more of a vibrant yellow? Maybe. It's a little bit too vibrant. This yellow is so strong. If you're going to get these colors, I recommend this yellow. It is so strong. It's just transparent yellow. It's super strong. It dries a little more muted, which is nice. So the yellow was not as bright as I thought it would be. So I need to keep that in mind that the yellow doesn't dry as nearly as bright as it looks. I wanna put these green dots on this leg here. It's so nice and vibrant. I know it will dry duller, but it still looks nice. I don't know why this reminds me of lettuce. <laughs> I keep laying my hand in parts I've already painted. I'm gonna add in some little color blotches like I did with the other one. This is interesting because it doesn't really feel like colors I'd normally use, um, which I like because I no normally don't really go for this kind of yellow. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like it needs some kind of ground to sit on. And this should probably, uh, probably be filled in also. I think I figured out why this looks so odd to me. I think I need to include that. No. Hmm. Wow, I love the way it looks when it, um, blends out, it just has like a richness that my other ones don't have. Because you can just see all the individual colors that went into this sort of blotchy wash. It's nice. It's nice. 
I think I might have muddied this up a little bit too much. Maybe I'll grab a gel pen and just bring out a little bit of highlights on the nose, on the antlers, or horns, should I say. <laughs> so I do prefer this one, I think. Wait, let's take them off so you can see them both. So here is what I ended up doing. And here are my watercolors, all the colors that I use for this. This is a lot of fun. I haven't tried new watercolor brand in so long. I think I used the Cotman ones and then I switched to the Shinhan ones and now I use the Schmincke ones. I'm really glad I got these. I'm excited to see what I'm gonna do with them and how they're gonna make my art look a little bit different because already these washes I'm really liking. Um, this one's a little muddy down here, but that's okay. I prefer this one. Um, probably because I got a little more experimental with the colors here, and I'm not really used to how the yellow works yet, but I will get used to it. I just really like how this dark purple turned out. I think that's a nice color that I'm really glad I can achieve with these colors. I keep smudging it everywhere. It's just all over me. I don't know how I managed that. And I also have a Patreon where I send out monthly rewards, like postcards and stickers and a mystery item every month, so if you want to get kind of like a subscription package for me every month. Uh, make sure to check out my Patreon. I also have sketchbook PDFs there if you want. And there's a Discord server where we all chat about art stuff. It's really fun. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss anything because it's easy to miss things on YouTube. And thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.